Hi, everyone. My name is Les Velez, and welcome to the Opus Interview Series. Opus, the Organization for Paranormal Understanding and Support, a 501c3 nonprofit organization that was founded in 1994 by myself and a doctor friend of mine by the name of Eugene Lipson. Our mission, simply put, is to help people having paranormal experiences. I'm the co-founder and chairman, and for more information about Opus, please go to our website at opusnetwork.org. I'm very excited today to have a, 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 an experiencer, uh, a friend, I'll call him a friend, uh, that has had an incredible experience, and uh, he's got a, a story that is, is just something that really touched me, and it touched me to the extent that uh, in my book that I wrote recently, The Unknown Other and the Existential Proposition of Alien Contact, he's one of the first stories in there. And so uh, I think you're going to really enjoy this interview. And I'm basically going to turn it over to uh, Adam uh, to uh, uh, talk about uh, his experience. And uh, so, Adam Jesse Burns, uh, I'm going to read your bio and then I'll let you take over the show. <laughs> Adam nice. Jesse Burns is an author and artist. He lived in a Greyhound bus for a year to write his first novel. The novel uh, name is In Like Flynn. His second book, The House Made of Wheels, is a literary fantasy exploring non-binary identity. That's very interesting. For his third novel, The Last Underground, Adam drew on his experiences with the Greys and other alien beings to write a very different kind of book about first contact. He was invited to write a chapter for the unknown other and the existential proposition of alien contact by yours truly, <laughs> forward by Linda Moulton Howe, and wrote an article about non-binary identity for, Huff is that the Huffington Post or Huff Post? It's now called Huff Post. Uh, oh, okay. The Post. They, sh they shorten the name. <laughs> yeah. um, Adam's a, a proud and grateful member of Opus. Thank you, sir. Um, which has been instrumental in uh, his coming to terms with a lifetime of contact. His website is adamjesseburns.xyz. And um, uh, yeah, J Jesse is a part of our support group. Uh, Opus has a support group. One of the things that we do, which uh, I'll talk a little bit about that at the end of, of the program here today. But uh, Adam, why don't you uh, start the process here and tell the people, about your experience <clears throat> thanks les um well it, it all started in 1995 when i was a volunteer art teacher on the hopi reservation for a summer camp and the hopi indians are, are very private native americans but they're very private and um i was very fortunate to be there um and um the the summer camp um there was about um 10 of us, I think, um, volunteering. And we were just sitting around outside the trailer that they'd given us. And um, we were, it, it was at night and um, we were all talking and there right in front of me about um, 12 or 15 feet away um, was a gray alien. It was just there. It was very, very dark there. Obviously it's it's just a mesa. There's, there's no street lights. It's very, very dark. And um, there was two pinyon trees, which at night are just like 15 foot, 20 foot high black blobs. And um, in, right in between them was standing this gray and it was about four feet high, had uh, the, um, the, the the stereotypical almond shaped head. It was a very large head with a tiny thin neck and black almond shaped eyes. And um, its skin was, was really, it looked white at night, um, but it's a really a very, very light gray. And, um, its arms were super thin and long and uh, its hands went down almost to the knees with the length of the arms, like short legs, in other words. And the arms and legs were also very thin. And um, the the palm and the fingers were very long and um, longer than ours. And um, it just looked at me and I just stared like transfixed at, at this gray and, and it just looked at me for a few seconds and then it turned and walked to its left which put it behind the tree and i and i was like 
screaming what is this and, and ran out and um looking for it and and the others will didn't see it and they and a couple of them were facing in that direction and um and we all ran around looking for it and we went all over the mesa thinking maybe it was a kid doing a prank but that was clutching at straws there isn't a, a human on earth even a really really emaciated human that could that could support that head on a neck that thin it was the kind of thin neck you would see on a, on a baby that that's that's dying of malnutrition really 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 thin and um and um it had sp smooth skin and um anyway we we that was the end of that and because i was exploring hopi um the hopi beliefs and navajo beliefs at the time i i thought perhaps i'd been shown a spirit which would have been a kachina or kashari and if it was hopi um and um with those belief systems it is integral to your growth to to keep it to yourself if you if you're shown something you don't just blurt it out and talk about it and so i kept it to myself and apart from the fact that we all we had talked about it that night it just quietly you know settled in my mind and i never talked about it again but um over the years i was always aware if aliens came up in any context like yeah, I suppose I did see that. And then I just wouldn't think about it again, which is the typical reaction of many um, experiences, because I think it's an overload for our consciousness. And um, so many, many years later, um, I'm a writer and I've written two novels and I was writing, preparing my third. And, and I wanted to write about one of the characters. I wanted to be an experiencer, an abductee, and I wanted to get it right. I thought I want to and this is all basically without giving a thought to my experience as though it had never happened. It's a very strange compartmentalization in one's mind. So I did some research on, on experiences and um, uh, I found it remarkable that um, I wanted to be faithful to them and get it right and not turn it into a Hollywood chase the alien story, but, but like um, something that was really true and, and honest and, um, even though it's a novel. And and so in this research, I, I was really struck by how all of these experiences from all over the world would talk about the same beings doing the same procedures in the same order with the same instruments and talk about some very strange things like a staring procedure. And and but they all talked about it and they and they all had nothing to gain. Most of them were assumed names because it was released by they had released the transcripts from their hypnosis, their aggression hypnosis. And so these were very honest accounts and they had, they, they adhered globally, uh, you know, from at least many, many countries that, that I was reading. And, um, and uh, that just struck me as incredible. And then some of the things they talked about were, were things that have happened that have happened in my life. Like, um, intermittent clairvoyance that, that doesn't seem to have it's very random where i would i would dream something that that then would happen uh either a few days later or a year later with incredible accuracy so that i'd say wait around the corner there's going to be a whatever and it was and and it, i proved it to myself and some of my friends over and over and things like that and um and uh waking up with um with with scoop marks and various um strange markings all of which i just would go whatever you know and um the i i thought that the, that i should really explore it with hypnosis and um i had also during that time of preparing that book i woke up one morning covered in spectacular bruises um a long hand-shaped bruise on my thigh and um uh swollen bruises um very like almost uh, like like half an egg you know um above the leg like really really bad um bruises and i can show you some images of those if you like um sure. but, but that was that what prompted me to go and get the the regression is, is that when i thought about thought about it like there's a few similarities that are that are weird and i don't never given much credence to and then there's this and and i took photos because i just thought this is weird and um, the night before was unremarkable. Um, uh, I, I didn't have more than like a glass or two of wine with my dinner. That was that was all that happened the night before. It was a weekday. I watched TV with my wife, went to sleep. Nothing, nothing happened. Um, and uh, 
let me share my screen yeah. and I can show you mm -hmm. those pictures. So this is one of the bruises. Wow. And oh, oh that's that, that that real large lump there, yeah. Yeah. And um this is something it was you could I could really see it, but but in the mm -hmm. in the photo it's not quite clear. It just looks like a yellow area here. Mm -hmm. But I drew the shape just to kind of suggest what what seemed to me to be finger shapes. It could be three fingers. I don't know. Can you see my cursor on the recording? Uh yes. Now mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Well, on the I left image, it. there seems to be a line coming round and then another here that's red, mm -hmm. and then just a blur down here. With, with the dark area that could be three fingers or four fingers and i did this this is a suggested highlighting of the sh of the the interesting part of the shape there's also a graze behind it um and um which may not be part of the same night in fairness but anyway that's that's what i woke up with and i went back with the regression to to that night and um uh i guess i'll shop stop sharing now um and and that was a the only regression hypnosis that I've done. Uh, the other hypnosis sessions I've done have just been to put me into a trance-like state where I can connect on the same wavelength as these beings. But the first one was was incredible. Um, I I was on a table and it was pliant, it was metallic, but felt very cool, and it was shaped to my body like as though you were laying on a waterbed, um, but even more. Um, intuitive and um there were um beings um who were messing with my leg doing something with my right leg and there were other beings i was i was laying on my back and couldn't move but i could move my eyes and so i could sort of see down my face i could see the tops of their bodies um well, what what did these particular beings look like this was what i could see from the side um, oh wow this is something i found online um that that I altered only by putting, there was a sort of a glow around it. Um, mm. And uh, I've never heard that before, uh, a glow around it. Yeah. Yeah, they were this color, this sort of like turquoise um, ultramarine color. And um, they had a, a faint glow that was sort of somewhere with blue at one moment, gold at the next. It was just like a glow. And I only saw them that one time. Um, the other beings that I saw were um, this is the the small white gray that I saw on the Hopi reservation, mm -hmm. um, and um, I couldn't see them, but but I think because of their height and because of what I know about the the um, the um, abductions, um, I think there were at least two of these moving around my body, doing various things. They they were they put their fingers in my mouth, they were moving my head around, my jaw moved by itself like this at one time and they lifted my my finger and held on to that for a while um and just things that were rather strange but certainly you know mm. some sort of exploratory um examination and um then i saw um this being something very close to this but much more wrinkly the one i saw i had a more wrinkly mouth this is something I found on the web and, and altered it slightly to be more like my experience. Um, what people call the elder greys. Um, and it was about um, five foot six and it was, um, or maybe five foot. Um, and um, it had a huge head and um, uh, it sort of just came over me and then, and then, and then looked at my face, but it was, it was in this angle, but it was, its eyes were here as though they were looking into my forehead and I was just staring straight at its mouth. So mm. what I really saw was just that mouth and, and the bottom of the eyes. And, um, I could, it was elephantine skin. It was gray with a gold tone to it. Um, like warm gray. And uh, I had just loads of vertical lines around the lips, like a very old person does. And, um, the lips were, were just a straight slit. And um, it just stared at me for a while and then went away. And then um, a mantid being um, leant over me. And um, I think I have a picture here. Um, <clears throat> and perhaps I'll zoom in. Um, 
Mm. Its its head was um it had the um a matidia in the eyes where where there was hexagonal cells that were catching the light, and they were dark brown, a little darker than this actually, and and just catching this gold light all through them, and its skin was was like a crocodile's. Uh, there were um, rectangular scales that were um, they dark brown around the edges um, and little ha tiny hairs um, between the scales and then in the center of, of each scale um, they went from like uh, brown at the edges down to turquoise in the middle which I haven't relayed very well in this I made this um, and um, there was little pores in, in the middle and what I was seeing was basically um, just the center of its just the bottom of that eye and the center of so I can just keep zooming and it'll and it'll um this is now low res, but this is basically what I saw. Mm. Um and it was just staring into my forehead. But the one of the strange things about it that I I, I really I, I worry so much, like, am I going crazy? Um, because this is none of this is what we would call normal. And <laughs> I really cling to to bits and pieces of evidence I can get my hands on. And one thing that um, I'd heard of the mantid, but had no idea what they looked like. Um, and um, the top of its head is rectangular, and it has these uh, antennae of some kind, just a, a two or three of them on each side. Um, and uh, a tiny mouth at the bottom you can barely see because it was just along the line of the scales. Um, anyway, um, the the thing that, was the, uh, that struck me later on is I read later, like years later, that... Um, about about how it behaved when when the gray came over me it just looked at me like this um but when the mantid came over it turned its head at kind of a complete right angle um so it was standing to my right and its head was completely at a right angle to its neck and um and, and at a right angle to my to my face so i was really looking at it obviously that way um but um let me i've described that badly it it was its body was here um and and its body was here, but its head was upright, so that it was crooked at a, at a completely right oh. ninety degree right angle, um, so that it was vertical. So I've described that badly. Um, but I read later that this is a common experience with mantid that they do this ninety degree um, crook of their neck, and um, things like that matter to me. They they help me know that mm -hmm. I'm not crazy. You know, right. um, the people are seeing something with that specific detail. And this mantid being has become my guide over the years. Um, uh, I know it looks kind of terrifying, and and um, it do you also... happen to have a, a side view of this at all? That would, no. would the side view look like? Um, no, I, I've mm -hmm. I've only seen it tilt its head slightly. I've not seen a side view. To okay. Be honest, in any way, but I've seen it full length, and um, it has. How, um, how tall was it? You, you, oh, you're it might be on. It's How? very, very tall. Oh, um, really? And wow. I'm six foot, and it, it towers over me. Um, and I, I've at one time I was very upset, and um, it um, took both my hands like this, and its hands are very hard, and um, it, it emanates such love. It's a really loving being, and um, it, it's it's helped me in a number of ways, which I'll get to in a minute. But just just to finish with what happened in that first um, mm -hmm. experience. Um, the elder Gray that was that was in the room. In the end, they both walked to the they went to the end of the bed and just stood there. And I had a conversation with them, and it's entirely telepathic. Um, they they just whatever they they think is just in your head instantly. And th there's no tone of voice. You don't hear one voice being different from another voice. They all sa feel and sound the same, but you know who's talking. I always instantly know it's the it's the mantid or it's the Gray. Um, and um, w when I just think a reply, they hear all my thoughts, but I I've come to understand their thoughts are guarded. They they share thoughts as a conversation, like we would do the difference between us thinking and speaking. Uh, for me, I have no veil. They 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 have read my mind anyway, and, and they just hear all my thoughts, but I reply to them and we have a conversation that way. And that's how all of the communication is being with all of the beings over the years. Um, and the, the one last thing about that, that abduction um, experience was what shocked me even more than the way they looked, which is clearly extremely alien, um, was that um, they were, there was this feeling with the elder gray of absolute zero emotion, 
the, it, it just wasn't there. It wasn't like a the cold detachment of a doctor or um, I would imagine a, a cop or a military doctor in, in you know interrogating someone. Um, uh, it wasn't like that. It just wasn't there. You could feel that it wasn't there. And that was just chilling to me. And, and I couldn't stop thinking about it while it was happening, even though they looked, you know, wildly not human. But but that to me was was the most striking part of the experience because it just felt alien. And and so that was the first experience. And then uh, yes. Adam, a question. Um <clears throat> when you had that feeling, were were you thinking in, in, to yourself that, wow, how come you know what's going on in your mind or did you ask, try to ask them a question during that period of time and did they give you kind of any kind of answer yes i asked i, I talked with them for about 20 minutes it seemed it felt like and when we talked about um but perhaps it was just a few minutes but it felt like quite quite decent length conversation and i asked them um and this was uh, the gray you were talking to i was talking to the gray and the mantid who were both oh, at the, oh, the end oh. of the bed Okay. I could just sort of see them by doing just sort of looking like this, yeah. and um and of course they're, they're fairly tall anyway. Um, and um. I I asked them um why are you doing this and 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 they said we cannot tell you and I, and I said well I know in the future and they said yes, and um sometimes they would both answer um but the bulk of the conversation was the from the mantid mm -hmm. um and I said um do you understand the meaning of honor as we see it? And, and they both said, yes. And I said, well, given that I'm giving you permission to do this and I am not freaking out or, or blaming you in any way for doing this, it would be honorable for you to tell me what, what this is all for. And uh, the man had said, we will tell you and you, oh no, it just said you will know, um, but not yet. And I tried that from various approaches <laughs> through the conversation and got the same answer. Um, and um, then, um, and uh, what else? Um, I, I was overcome with, with the feeling of love in the room and it was overpowering. And um, the, the feeling of relief, a strange sense of relief as though I had been holding back something. And I think I, I've come to understand that that's because it was, I've been going meeting with them my whole life and it's this veiled double life that's you know schizoid it's it's completely mm -hmm. you know not right. part of our consciousness that we're comfortable to have a whole part of your life kept from yourself and it was all beginning to come out and and i cried and um i told them they were beautiful and and um i described a security guard in the building where i worked who's the darkest african-american man i've ever seen his skin mm -hmm. was really really black that beautiful blue black that some people have and he had white hair like white like paper and i said um you know we're all so different all of us and it's the differences are beautiful and and the differences are what make us beautiful and i think you're beautiful and 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 they said we think you're beautiful too and wow. it, it, it was a lovely conversation and then right at the end of that experience um i felt a hand on my stomach and i turned as much as way i could and um there was um, a hybrid female, um, a teenager, who told me she was my daughter. And um, I've since got to know her better. And I have quite a few hybrid children. Um, but but I've just been getting to know Julia uh, because um, I have to start somewhere. And it's all so overwhelming. And this is a photograph that was taken by a friend of mine. David Wayne Fox, um, we're of uh, another friend of mine, Tate Kenny, who's uh, an actress and model. And um, this was for my book cover. And um, but this really is a very good um, depiction of the hy my hybrid daughter. Um, wow. That her eyes are even bigger, but I had trouble relaying that, and I sort of did the best I could for what I was trying to achieve with my book jacket, but um, to get as close as I could. Um, the more I tried to enlarge them, the more they just didn't, they just seemed strange, but but mm -hmm. her eyes are even bigger um, and they have dilated pupils the whole time. And around the edge there, there are sort of greeny blue, um, more green than blue and um, very small mouth and very small nose and ears and, um, and uh, mm -hmm. light hair that's just pushed back and a, and a very large, 
head, but not as large as as the greys. And um, and um, I've been getting to know her over the years as best one can with these brief, um, very surreal visits. Well, maybe I jump in here. A quick question. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the people are talking about the hybrid situation now and uh, quite a bit and that uh, uh, the hybrids that are around now, uh, supposedly, you can't tell them apart from us. Did yeah. you happen to see any hybrids while you were uh, in that type of a situation <clears throat> that did look more like us, that introduced themselves uh, as hybrids uh, that look like you and I? I haven't seen those, but I've but I've been told about how how it all works, and um, um, I, I've also done a lot of research, and so I ask them questions, and and they they confirm or deny things, and and, and set me straight on, on things. That's how it's been working recently because I've been reading like crazy about it. What but, what's um, yeah, I, I'd sorry, like I, to I, I go, go down that question. that path with you a little bit more about the hybrid situation because it's it seems like uh, whenever I'm being interviewed uh, for what I'm doing, uh, that that question comes up every time. What 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 can you tell us a little bit more about the hybrid situation? Why are they doing this, and what's the purpose? Thanks for reining me in. I'm a bit of a rambler. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, I definitely can. Um, the hybridization program is is a group effort by several different species who are actively working in a grassroots kind of um, quietly in the background way of helping us because their their um, their ethos is that they cannot interfere with our e evolution. I've asked them things about the future and they're very jaded. Uh, uh, what's the word? Not jaded. Um, very uh, veiled and uh, very um, secretive about it um, because they it's important to them that we find we reach a, an, an elevation in our consciousness but through our own evolution so the hybridization program is a way of coming in at the back end and helping us without actually meddling with our evolution so we make the big choices ourselves as a species so how it works is the because this seems intrusive um it's a, a rape of, of, of women um, to do this of sorts um it's it's extremely intrusive and i must emphasize that there are over 80 different species here and there are multiple agendas in play and there are some to take the planet and to to destroy us and there is a very big one to help us and 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 that is the hybridization program that i've been involved with and how that works is so that um, the abductees are consensual, even if they're not aware of that at that point. Later in life, we, we get unlocked if we're ready for it, and some prefer not to be, and that's just fine. The purpose um, is to um, create these hybrids, and then um, I can explain what they actually do in a moment. The beings from other places, just other planets, just people, they are incarnating here and they've given consent before incarnating that the body that they're incarnated in um, can be used for the purpose of this program and i'm one of them and they've showed me my dead body of the of the alien being which looks like a, a kind of gray but with a much smaller head and less almond shaped eyes i've been shown that being laying on a table of white white light and um they said this is you and you incarnated here from that life into the one you have now to be one of the consensual people. So men and women um, are abducted and this goes on from, in, from, from when you're a baby all the way through your life and through the uh, first half of your life, um, it involves the physical procedures as well as training in, in other ways. Um, but the physical procedures are that um, a... Um, uh, and I'm not a very scientific person, so I, 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 I struggle with this, but basically um, sperm is taken from a human male and then the egg is taken from a human female and then it's mixed with gray DNA and then it, it is placed back in a, a woman and she carries it three months to term of, of the nine month term. And then the embryo is taken out of the woman and it's put in a tank. And I've seen these tanks 
and they're they're um, the vertical might about three three rows high and and uh, about um, two foot six high and that wide and um, they are fed nutrients and information they are being trained and then by the time they come to term um, they're removed from the tank and they are a hybrid that is a baby that would look like Julia here um, and in other words um, uh, part human part grey with large eyes and, and human skin and um, uh, there are several in several generations have to happen before you can get a human looking hybrid so then this this hybrid that is born from this human it, it once it reaches adolescence it, it can then um have the same procedure done to it and um and with 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 um male human um, sperm donor and and that procedure is then to get basically the external body of a human so that the, the refining of of the differences are refined down to look possible for us and meanwhile the mind is the same and the mind is continually trained and it is it is the enlightened um higher species mind um within the human body and then at that third or fourth generation i'm not sure which it is mm -hmm. um i think it's four um then that that hybrid that can pass for human is placed on the earth and um there I asked at one point, how many abductees are there? Um, and they said many millions. Mm -hmm. um, and if you take many millions and then you you take these hybrids and um, you, I have about 15 hybrid children and um, that is pretty standard. That's a pretty standard amount. So if you take that figure or even 10, you've, ob you've obviously got a lot more exponentially from that many millions. So this is a lot of hybrids that, that are placed on the earth. And the reason they're placed is not to do a, a takeover because that's the whole point. They don't want to remove the agency from humans. Um, the, the, the entire process is to help humanity raise its consciousness globally and um any any of us who, who care that learn about this who care about this particular subject and learn about this are actively doing that every morning i thank the universe and i and i say positive shift now i just will that the the, the the consciousness of earth will rise and we will elevate ourselves from this primal violent abusive state that we are in if you look at how animals are treated yeah. worldwide you can see what we really do if you look at us and step back uh, if you look at how women are treated if you look at how um we treat the planet um on on every how, level um, how we how we treat ourselves i mean the wars that yeah. are going on and all of this i mean and, and this is i mean this is a a, a great uh, uh endpoint to, to have that kind of uh goal mission um yeah. i'm quite curious though is as far as these these hybrid children uh, that uh, the first or second gener or third generations, uh, what happens to them? What, 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 where do they go? What happens? Uh, that's, that's the, just came to my mind okay. as far. Yes, I, I can answer that. Um, the, many of them stay like Julia to, to work with their human donor parents and to work with um, the whole business of this um, of of these abductions i mean it, it's a it's 24 7 and it's global and it's a ton of work so um they 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 actively work with that and and with the training of um uh children the, the younger abductees and also um human donors um human samples of dna uh, and including animal samples flora and fauna marine avian everything um, mammals everything from earth is being sampled samples have been taken off world to other planets and these are being seeded as as new worlds and um there's at least two of them there's more than one as far as i've been told and um julia knows knows people on those planets and um and um it's it, it's it's what we would it's like eden it's it's um mm. it doesn't have our problems um but but uh it's like a backup if we if we should destroy ourselves quite honestly <laughs> yeah the way we're going lately i worry about that <laughs> that's for sure yeah. oh my goodness well that that's fascinating uh did, did they ever tell you where these planets are or 
or no i haven't asked and and yeah. uh, i will that's one of the things i want to ask them is mm -hmm. is where was the planet that i know it was in the orion constellation the planet that i was taken to or shown yeah. rather not physically taken to um that where my dead body was in my in the other alien form and i was shown the family there that, that i also have and i was also shown um the the meetings that were done before coming to earth that began this whole process they would still look at domes and watch earth but they had tracks of consciousness it's tracks of of pain they weren't tracks of like a plane or a missile mm -hmm. they were on a higher level and um they were just just there's this zigzagging of, of lines and they would focus in on them and they would pull out with their minds was a group of them around a table and um that and the, and the dead body that, that i left behind um we're in the Orion constellation, but I don't know which planet. Um, they showed me a symbol and they said, this is your symbol. And it was very clearly the Orion constellation. It was three three dots and then three dots and then a point coming. Mm -hmm. coming, And that's that's the Orion constellation with a gold light of where Betelgeuse is, which is the, 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 yeah. the brightest of the stars of that constellation. So there's some connection with Orion, but I don't know which stars. Um, and I doubt that they would tell me where the new worlds are anyway, but they might tell me roughly where mm -hmm. they're really cagey um, about the future <laughs> and about what we should be told. Yeah. So it comes out in, in increments. What did, what did they actually, your experience being on that table, what kind of procedures did they do, do to you? Um, I think I was only coming in, in the middle of the, the procedure. Um, I, I know from, from other talk, times talking to them, the bits and pieces I've picked up, that um, and from reading too that there is the physical examination and there's the staring procedure, and and there's there's also training in um, uh, telekinesis and um, and uh, even flying the ships. I'm not sure that I've been taught that, but I've definitely um, at other times as a child been shown um, how to move objects and how to move through walls, and um, that's the sort of stuff that's all switched off that we don't remember but all of these many millions of abductees and this is a good segue to, to emphasize i am not special i don't think i'm special i'm not important i'm just one of many millions in this process mm -hmm. and i'm just one of the ones who has uh, awakened to it and they've they've um continued to to train me in this but um did they ever tell you that sorry, you have answer to... your question i i, I yeah. can very quickly answer i'm sorry mm -hmm. um I was uh, laying on the table. There was the two blue beings moving my leg. They would be lifting it up, and they were they were working on it. And that is coincidentally where the bruises were. They were a little low down, lower down than where the bruises were, to be exact. And there was two of them next to each other, and um, they were busy with that throughout the entire experience, even while we were talking. And um, then there was other beings. I could feel these um, soft fingers, like palpating my head and uh, the front and back. And then they pulled their hands away and my jaw just locked and moved on its own like this, really hard, it hurt. And um, then um, they they put their fingers in their mouth, they put something that felt like cloth in my mouth um, and pulled it out, it was only brief. Um, then um, they, they lifted my left finger and, and so my hand was dangling and they did the same thing with my foot. They, they just lifted my foot um, and um, holding it by the ankle and it seemed to have be weightless like they weren't physically lifting it um they had some control over it um and um that's what i remember of the procedures um but um i have seen at other times three tables with naked people on them and um and terror in 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 the experience because they don't remember they don't know why they're there and they're essentially it's a hundred percent intrusive so it's a really one of the things that 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 is hardest to come to terms with. Um, I've had my differences with the with the beings over the years, um, wanting them to help my wife who's very ill at times, and 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 um, trying to to um, get them to do things I've heard other groups do, you know, other experiences experience, and they won't. So uh, the, I've I've um, had my differences with them, and and over the, the years I've had to accept. They're alien. They think in a different way. And this whole business, they think in the, the wide view, the long term, their experience of time is not three dimensional like ours. Um, it is um, it, 
it, it we experience it with entropy we we have we are very firmly locked in our in our three score years and ten and um and it's very real to us if you if you put a tomato on a table and watch it for long enough it will rot i mean this this is real and and we it's undeniable but they also are, are at a very different time um you uh, experience of time and i've experienced that with them they move fluidly through it and um so their their perception for our suffering when we at that at that moment on that table is is a blip and um i've had to try to explain to them that it's it's really awful for us to not to not understand and helping us understand i talked about this in the last experience i had the last uh hypnosis that it would really help us if they could grant us more comprehension of what's going on so that we're not so traumatized. Oh, it's a, yeah. What I, the question I was going to ask you is that, and I know you've asked them, you know, why they're here and they haven't been very forthcoming, but do you have a sense of what your mission is? Um, yes. Why this is going on? Yes. Um, first of all, um, the earlier part of my life when I was younger um, was to be part of the hybridization program. I'm now no longer really a donor. Um, I'm 56. Um, but um, I, I, as I, they, they showed me, I asked them, was it an accident that I saw this gray on the Hopi reservation? And um, they said, no, we wanted you to see us. And then you would when you felt you were comfortable investigating it you would come and find us and 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 talk to us and that's what i did um and um so um i've come to understand that that my my purpose here uh, as an older person is to to normalize the conversation we have to stop thinking that the news, you know, news readers titter. I saw one a couple of weeks ago when there was a, a UFO um, a, a story, and 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 they titter because they can't take it seriously. We've been conditioned for seventy or eighty years to, to not take it seriously, and um, conditioning is really strong. You know, we have a perception of beauty in our world. We have all these forms of conditioning that we. A crackpot because this is all excuse me so um otherworldly and ridiculous but it's just visitors from another shore it's just someone from somewhere else showing up and saying hi that's all that's going on and we have to grow up and face it and think of ourselves as one species on this planet and this planet is is one of billions with life on them and it, it's, a, it's a massive, massive family. And the thing that they keep emphasizing with me is we are one family. Um, one, one thing, well, I'll speak about that in a minute, but the, what, I, what I have to do is through my writing, they pick writers and scientists to, to, to share things with. And it's not an accident. I'm not just trying to market my book. Um, I, I actually would prefer to be doing a different kind of book, uh, an existential book and a philosophical book. Instead, I'm writing about aliens because this is what they want me to do. And I feel it's important to just get this out into the mainstream. So I've written a populist book, really different to the other books that I that I uh, which were very experimental. So, By the way, where, where, where can you get your book? You can't because no one wants to publish it. <laughs> um, I'm trying to get it published right now. I, I'm looking for an agent and so on. Um, my first two books, the first was too long and too experimental. The second one was even more experimental. And um, and the second one was about being non-binary. I'm non-binary. Mm -hmm. And so most of the aliens that I talk to. Um, and um, the third book, I'm just actively trying to do it right and really get this book out there. Um, and uh, I, I know people instantly think this is cynical and I'm just trying to promote it. But it's been a complete turnaround for me because I, I, I feel my purpose is to just normalize the conversation we have to just be okay to talk about this and as the disclosure unravels through various the aaro and various other things that are happening um on a sort of governmental or public level um that is really it's what we see but it's not the bigger part of what's really unraveling um and as all of this becomes more and more okay to talk about you know in the news and, and in journalism um I, I, people like me can pop up and 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 say hey this is this is a normal conversation with mm -hmm. people 
these are people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's so important, you know, like what possessed me to bring my book out, you know, it's, it's like I've been involved with uh, the ufological field for, you know, since I was 11, you know, and I saw an object and it scared me and, and I went and started reading books on UFOs and, and it, it, it left me for a while, but I got back into it and, and you know, got involved uh, by, with my friend to start this organization. And uh, so um, it, it, it just compelled me after a while, you know, that I need to write this book. And so, and there are times when I, I've decided, okay, I'm done. I'm finished with all of this and I'm going to go do something else. And I get pulled right back into it. So I think they are, they are controlling to a certain degree in my mind that, this is the kind of thing I need to be doing, uh, helping people with their experiences like yourself. And, and, uh, uh, and now you're doing the same thing, but in a different way, but it's still just as important. And, and so, um, you know, thank goodness that you, you, you've got the uh, willpower and, and uh, the fortitude to push on through all this, you know, skepticism and ridicule a lot of times that 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 happens as well uh so uh great job adam great job so continue <laughs> uh, well I, I don't want to like go on too long but there's one thing i really wanted to talk about which is important oh, yeah. part of the message um and i'm going to share screens again mm -hmm. to show you something um um i was shown this um and it you see this, this image you're you're okay you're frozen there Les. yeah uh can you hear me um yeah. okay can you see yeah, the image? Uh, yes we see it and i hear you yeah it, you're okay you're... okay um demented being um mm -hmm. sorry am i coming in and out yeah um demented being Sorry? Yeah, you're coming in and out, but keep going. Um, well, um, the mentor being showed me this dome of white light and uh, just stars behind it. And um, what you see here, and we were standing in the center and there was um, like, a, like a pool of light or a circle around us of light. And um, I haven't, this is, I made this and it's not very good. It's, it's, it's as accurate as I could make it. Um, they were like domes all around us and um, they were all different tones and um, they were like alcoves um, is a better word for it, like archways and they were dark and there was, they were sort of mottled. Some were darker than others and some were very dark. And um, what I got wrong in this illustration is that they're dark at the center going out to light. They actually were more varied than that. Um, and I asked what they meant. And the man had said, these are experiences that you're going to go through as a species before you reach a higher consciousness. And um, so uh, I immediately jumped on it um, and, and said, uh, what are the experiences? Well, what are we going to go through? And, and it took me up to a dark al alcove and we went into it. Um, this is just in our minds. All of this is illustrative. Um, mm -hmm. And... Um, and then through through the dark alcove, it became uh, stars in space. And then I saw um, the Earth at night and I could see the US with all the lights on at night. And it was most of the lights were out there. I've, you know, it's not like what we normally expect to see with this cities of lights. And uh, there was it was really, really scattered. And uh I had this instant feeling of like water wars and they wouldn't tell me what it was, just that it said, you, you are going to have to go through some really dark times um, to get to where you need to get to. And we came back out of it and we stood there again in the center. And I, and I said, so if this dome of light on the edge is uh, the higher consciousness that we will reach, are you saying that we reach it, that we will make it? And it said, yes. And that is one of the most um, amazing um pieces of the future that it's shown us, albeit in an illustrative fashion, that that we do reach that higher consciousness. We're really going to have to go through some very dark times. And 
we can only imagine what they are. There's, there's wars about to start around us right now. There's the environmental collapse is imminent. There is so much going on. Um, but um, the, the big deal is that we will reach that higher consciousness as a species. And um, that is incredible. And I, I, that, that is something that gives me comfort all the time. Uh, yeah, I mean, these are the kind of revelations that uh, experiencers uh, do come away with. Uh, some, some not as uh, specific as this one. I mean, that, that's that's quite a revelation. Um, and and so, yeah. uh, <laughs> I, I you know, I can imagine your feelings when they, when they said that. You know, it's like, yay! <laughs> you know, we're gonna. Yeah, make I had it chills, better. and I had chills just now remembering it. I bet, I bet you did. Um, I mean, it's it's just an incredible, incredible experience. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to bring up? Because we do have time, so you know, we can we can uh, go a little bit further if there's some other things that you'd like to uh, mention. I think in one of the interviews that you did with uh, Linda Moulton Howe, you were talking about these strings. Um, uh, of, yes. I, I think I think was that consciousness or, or something. Yes, what some would call the soul journey, um, the journey of our soul. Um, I asked them, do we do um, do we have a soul? Do they have a soul? They said yes um, to both. And um, uh, uh, they showed me um, a, a line of light in space. Um, I have a video of it, but it probably won't play um, uh, on over this. Um, but uh, the, the, and the video of it that I made, <laughs> not of what they showed me. Um, and um, it's just a thin, better to describe it, just a thin line of, of, of white light. And along that line, there was blips, um, like diamond shaped blips um, that were solid and opaque and, and not like a waveform, but like literally like a, like a pyramid either side. And, and they were like a creamy warm light. And um, they, they, they would appear and stay there. And then another one, another one along. And then they showed me another thread and it would have lips and another thread would have lips until there was so many threads and so many, you know, so many, so much light, it just became white and I, and I, and everything was white. And they said, those lines are the, the, the path of a consciousness, which goes forever. And the, the blips of light are, are incarnations, what we would call incarnations. They're, they're becoming in a physical form and they not they are not necessarily on the same planet um and uh you go through in, for them when they incarnate they remember the everything about the previous life and make a choice where they want to go next it's like putting on his new shirt it's it's or you know it, it's just mm -hmm. completely in, they're in control of it there's no karma or any of the other things that that some people believe here um but those those consciousness that consciousness with those lives along it is existence and and all beings have it and and um one can become aware of it or not but it will still happen and so that was like the soul journey um another thing they they showed me was um that um we really are connected to everything i, I was standing on 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 sand and um uh, there was this waves and everything was very flat it, there was nothing of distinction around me and then the, the the sand began to ripple and and as it rippled um i could feel the ripples in my feet and then um the sand was gone and it was it, it was all water and then it was it was neither water nor sand and it was all rippling and it just went out to stars to to the universe to everything and they said you are connected to everything everyone and everything is connected to everything we are all connected and the harm that we're doing to the planet is the kind of negative and, and to each other is the kind of negative forces that are that are literally just we're just cutting our hand off, cutting our leg off, punching ourselves in the face. That's what we're doing right now. And and being connected to everything is how they feel our pain and, and they want us to be part of the family. And I thought it was encouraging to know that that we can all touch this just by meditating or just by thinking for a moment, you could be walking along the street. Um, you know, you could be sitting, drinking a cup of coffee, whatever you might be doing, you could just take a moment and think about it. And we really be connected to everything. And, and that's a powerful thing that we have that, that we can all, it's a resource that we're all in touch with. And one last thing they showed me that is important is they showed me as a light being like my inner essence 
was as a light being. And given that I had a physical form which died to incarnate here along that path of these life uh, lives, um, and they showed me an earlier life as well, um, uh, there is also an essence within us and within all of us that is that is um, light, pure light. And um, I, I was shown myself in that form and it was um, just tapered off to nothing uh, as though my feet were together. And it was this white, creamy white light, very warm, very soft and gentle. And the hands tapered off to points like in the head like a candle. Um, and um, within it was like, uh, shapes like rectangles and squares and oblongs that were just moving around slowly um, within it and they were like a bluish light or a very very white light or, or a more golden light and they just kept moving around within it and I've been shown that myself in that form several times and one time I've, I found myself standing on in one of the small the small dome shaped um, ships where the abductions happen um, they're just like scout ships I would call them um, and I'm standing there with the mantid, and then next to me is this light being that looks exactly like me. Um, and I was here, and it was there, and 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 um, I was just staring at it and didn't know what this was. And I was told this is the source, and I said, "You mean like God?" And and they said, because people have called it that, and they said, "Source." And I'm an atheist, and I had to adjust to this <laughs> encounter. And, and um, I think the important thing to take from this is, is again, not that I am in any way special, but, but that, that the source was the same as me, as you, as everyone, and we are all source. We are all this power of the universe. It's in us, it is us, and we are all the same. And we all have that value and that beauty and that power, but we don't use it, most of us. But oh. we can yeah, no, and that's that's fascinating. Uh, you know, I've 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 been told that yeah, we are we are a source, and I have, I definitely have heard that before. Yeah. Uh, what you did bring up something that uh, they they're able to remember their incarnations. Uh, why why is it that we can't remember our incarnations? It's um, I think it's to do with just our consciousness not being at a certain level, level. where we can uh -huh. where we can do that because some people who can there are psychics here there are people who have telekinetic powers <clears throat> you know can bend spoons and what have you there, there's all different kinds of gifts that people have here most notably um, clairvoyance which is you know it's it's not I wouldn't say it's common but it's it's like a lot of people on this planet have it it's not something that one person had once you know um the, we we can grow and learn those to to access those things and there are people who do regressions i mean hypnosis and and uh, go back and and visit their past lives and some who are able to do it without even any help there's all different uh, gradients of of awareness and skills really and i have no skills i'm useless at this i can't do anything when i'm meditating i need to have the hypnosis to put me on this sort of uh they call it a frequency what we would call a dimension they call a frequency um others call it a density but they use the word frequency and it's it's also a vibration you could call it um and uh they've used that word too actually um and and it's um they're always on that level and when i get to that 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 level through through a hypnosis, I just get to that incredibly still place. Um, it's like I'm suddenly on their radar and they can talk to me and then they take me and show me something. Um, and um, so not bringing it back to me, more, more importantly about the levels of consciousness, um, uh, we are in a three dimensional consciousness with, with the fourth dimension being time, the temporal, mm -hmm. um, for, uh, what we would call a dimension, I suppose. Um, we're in that 3D dimension. They're they're in a 5D dimension. And in between us, there's this fourth dimension level where there are beings who are native to Earth who do not want us here, who um, can see us, but we can't see them. And there are um, factions among them who are trying to help us. It's, it's a really complicated s story. Um, but um, we, we are... Um, we have past lives that are leading to a higher consciousness, ultimately, all of us. And some are aware of it and some are not. That's all I know about it. Yeah, it's interesting because um, in one of the support groups that I, I facilitated when I was living in San Jose, uh, a person said one day, 
I've seen you before. I said, where? UFO conference? No, no, no. I saw you on board the ship. I mm-hmm. said, really? Oh, that's interesting. And I kind of blew it off. And uh, it was like a year and a half later or something. A totally different person came up to me after the meeting. And he said, I, I've seen you before. I said, really? Where? You know, the same question. The UFO conference? No, no, no. You were sitting on this bench naked on board the craft and you were freaking out. And they told me to go over to you to calm you down. <laughs> so at that point, wow. I decided to go get regressed. Yeah. And uh, I had three separate regressions. I had multiple past lives, multiple past lives. That's but wonderful. nothing, nothing came up like, uh, you know, being on board a, a craft or, inter, you know, being involved with any aliens. However, again, in a subsequent conversation I had with someone, they said, well, maybe this person saw you in a past life. And that's what they were really remembering. Uh, <laughs> life on a ship. Yeah, on a ship. So who knows? Who knows? That's I mean, because, you know, they can manipulate time and space. So it's like it, it, once you go down yeah. this rabbit hole, it becomes mind boggling, mind boggling. Yeah. Um, yeah. In your book, in your book, uh, uh, are you are you talking about a lot of the same things that we've talked about today or in, in more depth? Yeah. Yeah, it's actually going to be three books because there's just so much um, information and also I, I want to lead the story up to a point of enlightenment and how to get there ultimately. Have, have um, you have you thought about the fact of, of uh, just putting this book on Amazon? Um, I will do that if I can't, you know, do it the traditional publishing way. I'm going to give that one really hard push over the next few months. And if I can't do that, I'm going to do it. Well, the- yeah, the editor that I used uh, got that all set up for me, uh, you know, and, you know, I have I have all the credentials, you know, in my book and, and everything oh, that. Uh, okay. So if you if you if you want to talk to him, he's a great guy. <laughs> he yes. might be able to point you in the right direction. Yes, I'd like that. Thank you. All right. We'll yeah. do. We'll do. I'll get you that information. Um, yeah. So great. Um is there anything else that you'd like to uh, bring up at this time? We got just a few more minutes here that uh, anything that you want to leave uh, the audience uh, with uh, before we uh, close the session? Um, I think we've covered all the things I wanted to talk about and thank you for your patience with it all. Uh Um, I just wanted to say uh, in closing, uh, thank you to Opus and your help uh, along the way, because Opus has helped me. It's a support group for experiences that, that, that is very private and safe and it's helped me go to process it, to process this this wild stuff. Um, and um, I, I didn't show actually other different kinds of puncture wounds and other kinds of scoop marks and things like that. But we will talk about things like that and then say, oh, I had those. Oh, mine was on my wrist. Mine was on my arm. Mine was on my leg. And then we share pictures and talk about these things and everything from physical evidence to um, experiences that, that are really literally out there. Um, it, in a safe environment is unbelievably valuable and it's helped me to just process it internally and it's helped me to talk about things and literally you know figure things out um, with a group that's safe and I, I am extremely grateful to Opus. Uh, uh, th- thank you. Take to my journey. As well uh, as- thank you so much Adam. Uh, I, I appreciate that. Uh, we, we try. Uh, we're trying to do what we can for people that are having these kind of experiences because oftentimes they can't talk to family members. They can't talk to their spouse. They can't talk to the fellow workers. Uh, you know, uh, they can't talk to clergy uh, or anybody, you know, and there's a fear of being thought that you're crazy. And of course, then these people sometimes do go to a psychologist, or psychiatrist and find out that they're not crazy. They don't have a psychopathology. So then what, what happens then? Where do you, where do you turn to? So, you know, I really appreciate uh, you being part of the group because uh, you've been been there for for a number of years, and you're you 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 always come up with wonderful uh, insight, and, uh, and so it's very much appreciated not only by the people in the group but myself and our board members because uh, of of what you do and and how you present things. Uh, so thank you, thank you very thank much, Adam. I really appreciate it, and it's great having you here today. Uh, it's been a long time. <laughs> I know we talked about it for <laughs> a couple of years, but now we finally made it happen. But um, anyway, I want to thank everybody uh, out there for for listening. Uh, 
and I, and thank you for being on the show, Adam. Uh, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we're a nonprofit, and so we depend on donations. So if you can go to our site and hit that donate button, we would greatly appreciate it. Also, we're on YouTube, and if you go there, uh, if you could subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, and and hit a like button there that would be helpful as well uh so uh, again thank you adam and thank you everybody out there and i hope you enjoy this interview because i certainly have so take care thanks guys thank Bye. you adam bye-bye